1988 BMW 325i. I was told to take a look at this and um, it belongs to somebody that the owner of the shop knows. And when I went to look at it, I gave, gave it a visual look, went over it, and then I just wanted to see if there was any refrigerant inside of it. So I took off the cap and I depressed the suction side, the vapor side, so I don't get liquid splashed in my face. I just depressed the valve core and it sounded like this was under a vacuum. So I wanted to know if it's under a vacuum, that means somebody was working on this. They kind of knew what they were maybe doing or they couldn't figure it out, but they had it on the machine. So what I did was I hooked up to the line. I don't have it turned on yet, but I wanted to see if it goes into a vacuum. And uh, so I already had my gauges in a vacuum. As you can see, it's 832 microns. So if this is under a vacuum, it should stay under a vacuum. If there's a little pressure in here, it'll go a little positive. It depends on how much. So let me open this up. Go there, boom, open. And what happens? Are we open over here? No, we're not. I opened up the valve, low side. And we're actually a little bit positive pressure. So the little hissing I heard was not a vacuum. It was only 1.5 PSI of pressure. This was originally an R12 vehicle original r12 uh, fittings on it somebody could have had 134 but <laughs> wouldn't know um, but that's what you use a refrigerant identifier on but when you only have 1.3 1.4 psi your refrigerant identifier will not take a sample of gas that low and give you a uh, readout so i wouldn't be able to tell so just going around use your fingers spin the clutch okay this means nothing you know wiggle the clutch try to feel that way try to check for grease on the front of it get your fingers down and see if it's splattering out oil anywhere that still doesn't mean nothing because even if it doesn't wiggle there's no oil splatter or it feels like it's still tight it still could be out of calibration because it uses a fluid friction and a bimetallic spring that go out of calibration they're usually only good to be like you know really good within 30 to 50,000 miles and they start drifting out of calibration you'll never see an engine temperature change because they overbuild and oversize the radiator so much to make sure there's no problems but when it comes to the AC condenser getting airflow it makes a big difference <laughs> And um, so you'll suffer with your air conditioning, but you will see no temperature rise on your gauges or anything like that when this goes defective. On these old BMWs, we'll often see problems with the electric fan. So we come down here and uh, my, my light's not out. No, nope, my light's not on. Sorry guys. And I spin the hand, I wiggle the fan. I see the fan is mechanically not bound up. And uh, the relay, uh, the the resistor doesn't look burnt, dirty. I got some. Uh, there's a little brownage on that white there. It, it has gotten heat, and that's kind of normal. But it's not severely burnt looking like some of them. Uh, get your fingers. Come down. If you could go down from below or above, and spin the clutch. Feel for some grippy, tight spots. This is. This is spinning real freely, and that's good. Look for signs of oil. They clean this car really good. So I'm pretty sure, little bit of oil residue I see here and here, it looks like they cleaned this really good. So they uh, steam cleaned this and probably cleaned off any residue of oil that I might find, but I'm still gonna look for some. On this vehicle, I'm going to jump into a high pressure nitrogen test since there's no refrigerant in here. And uh, I'm going to throw it on the vacuum pump first because I, if there's moisture in the system and any other refrigerant, I don't want to push it under 150, 175 PSI of dry nitrogen deeper into the oil, into the system. I want to do a quick recovery or uh, evacuate with a vacuum pump see how low i could it holds under vacuum then i'm going to put nitrogen pressure in it and see under nitrogen pressure so we'll wait for the next uh video this is video number one and uh, i'll have the vacuum pump off and then while the vacuum pump uh, pump is hooked up 
on port number two, I'll turn off the vacuum and then immediately with port number three right here, I'll open up the nitrogen and pressurize it because this is a four port manifold and you could do more than one thing at a time on it and you don't have to switch hoses around. So next video, vacuum and nitrogen pressure test.